Would you say that you're hot for the Lord today? Or would you say that you've had better days, more close to God, maybe times of your life where you were really, really hot for God, and today you're just kind of there? Well, that's where Israel finds himself in 1 Samuel chapter 3 and 4. In 1 Samuel chapter 3, Samuel is a little boy, and he hears God's voice at night. He thinks it's Eli talking to him. And so three times he says, Eli, what'd you say? And then the third time, finally, Eli says, go back and ask the Lord what he's, what he's saying to you. And God gives Samuel a message that Eli's time as being leader and his son's time is about done. And he gives the message to Eli. And he says, thanks for telling me. Well, the next chapter, chapter four, the Philistines begin to attack Israel and 4,000 men fall in battle. And so they get this idea that they're going to get the Ark of the Covenant, and that way they get God on their side. So they go, they tell Hophni and Phinehas, two priests that are doing bad stuff in the temple, to get the Ark of the Covenant and bring it into battle the next day. And the next day, 30,000 men die. The Ark of the Covenant is taken, and Hophni and Phinehas are killed. When Eli finds out about this, he falls back on his chair. He's 98 years old, and he breaks his neck and dies. His sons are dead. But the thing that got him was the Ark of the Covenant was taken in battle. Phineas has a wife, and she's giving birth and uh, finds out about this information. And when she finds out she can't even speak, the first thing she says is, Ichabod. That's his name, the son that I just had, Ichabod. In other words, God's glory has departed. God's glory departed from Israel for so many reasons. They could have just repented of their sin and humbled themselves, and then God would have been with them in victory or in battle. They didn't need a, a good luck charm, the Ark of the Covenant, although that did go into other battles, and it was fine that they took it to other battles later. Saul did this, and David did this. But to use God like a good luck charm instead of repenting of our sin and humbling ourselves is a big, big mistake. This story is actually one of the first things that we've ever found in um, archaeology that confirms the Bible. There was a silo, grain silo, found in 1970 with five lines on it. And when they translated it, it was about this battle and about taking the Ark of the Covenant and specifically mentions Hophni, the priest. This is a true story, but it's a true story in our lives. And it's true that we depart from God and we get cold and we say, well, what can I do for a good luck charm? I can go to church. I can do this or this. When God really is saying, I want you to repent of your sin and I want you to pray and beg me to come back into your life in a hot way. In the book of Revelation, we find out that the church of Laodicea was neither hot nor cold. They were lukewarm. And God says, I want to spit you out of my mouth. Today, What's your spiritual temperature? Why don't you join me in going to the Lord and talking to him about your own spiritual temperature?